short service of prayers, readings and reflection on life's pilgrim journey. We gather near the place that St David found closeness with God, knowing God best, as Christians have done throughout the ages, as Creator, Father, Redeeming Son and life-giving Holy Spirit. We pray we may also know God's closeness, his compassionate love, and his wise direction in our lives. We begin with the collect, the special prayer for St. David, who called others to be joyful, to keep the faith, and to be faithful in the little things of life. Let us pray. God our Father, you gave St. David to the people of Wales to uphold the faith. Encouraged by his example, may we joyfully hold fast to the things which lead to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. A few verses from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world. He was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, though that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another. Love one another deeply, from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Jesus called many to follow him, and he still calls us today to follow him. And I used to love the hymn as a youngster, we have a friend in Jesus. Well, what is a friend? Well, probably a person you know well, like, and who supports you, and also a friend who can support the causes or organisations. We have friends of the cathedral. Then what does it mean to be friendly? Well, treating someone as a friend on good terms, being kind and pleasant, not harmful to any particular thing, and especially our environment. And there again, we have friends of the earth. And friends often make us smile or even laugh a lot. And the Christian tradition hardly associates laughter with Jesus at all. Which is why any picture of a laughing Jesus is very striking. There is such a picture, I'm not sure of its origin, yet it is known to be popular amongst poor communities in Latin America, who see it as a laughter of hope. After all, Jesus brought hope to the poor and the outcasts, and he was mischievous in the ways he did things, eating with sinners, feasting with others when they were fasting, enjoying life in ways that very much upset the religious authorities. Despite all this, it is unusual to see Jesus depicted as jovial, Laughter is extremely important to us as human beings. It has the power to connect us to one another and to transform us. Even a picture of laughter can do that.
Yet, when we emphasise Jesus' humanity, we tend to talk about his vulnerable and sad aspects rather than his happy one. We know that Jesus got tired. We too get very tired. Jesus was at times hungry. We know there are thousands of people starving in the world. Jesus was thirsty. And that reminds us of the lack of clean water, clean drinking water for many. And Jesus wept. And things can bring us to tears. But when have you ever heard someone say, Jesus was truly human? He knew how to laugh. And some would question, how can you laugh even when you are responsible for so serious a sin? Jerome, Augustine and Benedict all thought it indecent to laugh because of our sinful state. And it was written, this age is one of tears, not joy, said Jerome. Human beings laugh and weep, Augustine said, and it is a matter for weeping that they laugh. Fear of laughter has had a powerful grip on Christians down the centuries. The dilemma of laughter hasn't gone away. And people might find it odd or strange when I say, we do laugh in church. Most main Sunday services include a little bit of comedy, a little bit of humour, in slots such as the sermon or in the notices. But we wouldn't laugh during any part of a church service where laughter might threaten or mock sincerity. Laughter affects how seriously we take ourselves and others. A problem when laughter is misplaced. But it also means that laughter has the power to debunk high-minded or authoritarian tendencies. So it's a good thing when fundamentalists tell jokes? Question mark. I remember a debate between Christians who were disparaging of the program Spitting Image because it mocks those in authority. But only the most dictatorial systems ban comedy. Dictators cannot risk being laughed at because laughter is a great leveler. Jesus was forever getting into trouble for inappropriate behavior. No doubt he was mischievous towards religious authorities and thought they took themselves a little bit too seriously at times. Yes, he must have laughed. Nathaniel asked, can anything good come from Nazareth? Was he joking or being ironic? Laughter doesn't have to be cruel. It doesn't have to be deceitful. Christian tradition has worried that laughter undermines truth and is insincere. But by telling things as they aren't, humour has the power to transform people and situations into what they are called to be. That is why the picture of the laughing Jesus is a picture of hope. Blessed are the laughter makers, for they bring heaven to earth. Blessed are those who greet us with a smile. Blessed are those whose laughter lives in our memories. Blessed are those whose chuckle and laughing eyes tug the corners of our mouth. Blessed are those who see the funny side of things, for they redeem mistakes and failure. Blessed are those who make us smile because they are offering and revealing the face of love. Blessed are those who make us laugh, for they reveal the joy of heaven. So if you see someone today without a smile, give them one of yours. And you never know, you just might make them laugh. Amen.
you are invited to ponder your own pilgrim journey. Perhaps you want to reflect over many years. Or perhaps it's just a few days. Or merely the journey of this morning that comes to mind. Ask yourself, what brought you here? Where are you now in life? What are you seeking? Let us pray. We pray for ourselves and others who visit this cathedral today. Lord Jesus Christ, St. David's Saviour and Lord, you are the way, the truth and the life. Be our way. Give us grace to follow your lead, courage to persevere when the going is tough, and when we stumble, let us not be afraid to take hold of your outstretched hand as you offer us a fresh start. Be our truth. Give us your wisdom so we may know how to walk in the paths of honesty and integrity. Be our life. Revive us when we falter, refresh us when we tire, and bring us to share in your risen life, now and for all eternity. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us in the language of our choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we take a few moments in silence, you may wish to reflect on how you desire to go forward from here. Remember, in compassionate love, Jesus Christ calls you to follow him, promising in return his compassion, his companionship, his guidance, his strength and peace, whatever life brings. We close with prayer, after which please stay and enjoy this holy place for as long as you like. And all who wish to come forward for anointing with holy oil, with prayer for God's strength and guidance, healing and wholeness in life's unfolding journey. Let us pray. Almighty God, awaken in us the zeal of your servant David, that we may joyfully follow you in singleness of heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.